What's up everybody, Nick Saka here. This is episode three of the A1 Agent series. I've got one of my best friends, Brian Vasquez here. If you guys don't know Brian, Brian Vasquez is a father of two, a husband, an insurance agency owner, and his most recent endeavors, real estate investing. Similar to me, he started out in the banking industry. He paid his dues for about eight years before opening up his insurance agency at 26. He scaled, two, uh, he scaled the two insurance agencies um, into a $3.6 million book of business, and he did that in only five years. He's now putting more of a focus on real estate investing, where he's flipped 12 houses in only 18 months. He's one of the smartest, most analytical people that I know. And lastly, he's the biggest piece of shit that I know. <laughs> Brian, thanks for gifting me your time today, bro. Of course, man. So, <laughs> so, such a pleasure to be here. Yeah. It's especially with that introduction. Dude, I, I had to give you, I had to like, you know, knock you off your high horse after, you know, all that. Yeah. Um, but no, real talk, Brian's seriously one of the best people I know. I love this dude. He's... You know, we have this uh, interesting friendship where we, we love each other, but we talk a lot of, a lot of crap to each other at the same time. <laughs> but, uh, Brian, tell my listeners a little bit about who you are and your story. I mean, uh, a lot like you said, man, um, you know, I'm, I'm a husband, I'm a father, I'm a son. Um, but as career-wise, I mean, yeah, currently uh, I'm an insurance agent. Um, been one for going on seven years now. Um, but you know, recently I just kind of found a passion in, in real estate investing. Um, so that's kind of like what takes up most of my time now, mm -hmm. you know, but so I got, you know, and so uh, I, we've talked a lot about this, you know, leading up to this and I want to pick your brain and I think there's nobody better to talk on the whole, um, on the whole real estate versus insurance subject, which is a question I want to say for later, but you know, just real quick, because a lot of my audience is in the insurance business, and so we are kind of speaking to them. However, I wouldn't be surprised if, you know, people that are just interested in leaving whatever they're doing would be conflicted between insurance and real estate. So we'll get into that a little bit later, but tell me the, the most important thing you learned uh, as a business owner slash agency owner. That's tough, man. Um... Cause you know, I mean, it, it's always it's always easy when you work for a company. You know, uh, obviously back when I was at the bank, I was in a managerial role. Um, so I tell a lot of people this, like you know, if you if you've had the pleasure of being in a managerial role, you're gonna do a lot of the same things. But what happens is that you don't put the same emphasis because when you work for a company, everything doesn't come out of your pocket, mm -hmm. right? You're in charge of you're in charge with running the business. But you don't really have that. It's like you're, you're able to run kind of free, if you will, because at the end of the day, your mistakes won't cost you personally. At the end, it may end up costing you your job, but you have time to figure that out. When you become a business owner, you don't have that, right? Um, everything, every, ex every mistake, you see a related expense to it. But I would say that the biggest lesson I took away um, would be probably the importance of hiring people and hiring the right people mm -hmm. you know we all hear the notion of like the uh what is it slow to hire quick to fire um you know i wouldn't even say it was even so much that when i first started um i tried rolling solo for a while you know i, I figured hey let's keep my expenses low and i'll bring it in and as i start bringing in the revenue i'll bring in somebody and uh that started going south like really quickly you know and uh it came to a moment where it was like push to shove. And, uh, you know, there's a lot that goes into it, man. Like when I first opened up the agency, I was, uh, there came a point where I thought about, you know, I'm not going to make it. Um, so I was like, you know, maybe it's, uh, it's time to kind of just get, let this go and let's just go back to corporate America and we'll see what happens. But after having a, a deep conversation with my wife, um, you know, she was the one that was like, dude, I know you like if if you quit now, like you're always going to wonder what if what if. Right. And so we had the conversation about like, well, if I stay, I mean, we're going 100 and that might mean going into bankruptcy, you know, but I mean, at, at least at least I'll know how far I was able to take this thing. 
you know, or should we play it safe? And then I just go back and we take our losses here where they are. And my wife was just, I, I, I've told you this story before. This stays with me to this day was just simply, you know, she's like, we have a house. Our cars are, aren't that old. They should hold out for another couple of years. I heard that if you file bankruptcy, you can bounce back in about five years. She's like, I got five years, you know? So I was like, so we're going all in. And she was like, we're going all in. <laughs> and that's kind of what you need, right? Because as a, as a husband and a father at that point, I think my biggest fear wasn't even failing. My biggest fear was failing them, right? I didn't want to be uh, an embarrassment to my wife that then all of a sudden, like, my in-laws had to look at and be like, wow, like, you know, I know she loves him, but she married a loser. Like, look, look, at, look at the position he's put his family in, mm. you know? So knowing that I had her back in me was, like, all I needed to let everything go. So going back to your question was the importance of hiring – I hired my first two people off of a credit line, bro. I, I had all, I, while I was testing and everything, testing the waters, trying to go by myself, I liquidated the, the little capital that I had to start the business with that I actually ended up taking a credit line that I had and my first two people were hired and I was paying them their payroll off of that credit line, mm. you know? But that was the best decision I could have made because within about... Everybody has their growing pains in about three months. You know, one, one of those producers is still with me today. She did not write a single, like, I think she wrote a total of maybe like 12 items in those three months, man. But just like the constant coaching and working together, you know, you could tell a lot from a person based off of how they take on failure. People who are comfortable with failure, you know, won't, won't get anywhere. It doesn't matter how much you believe in them or anything. You know, but this person in particular, like she, I couldn't even tell her anything because I would see how hard she was on herself. And then now, like she's a rock star, you know, and then the other individual is no longer with me either, but he was a rock star himself. And then eventually the business just took off, you know. So I, I, if there was one lesson, man, I would just simply say in any business, I just don't think the right move is ever to go buy it by yourself. Mm -hmm. It's, you know, hire people. We Fig all need help. Figure out a way to make that happen. Yeah. I do want to give a quick uh, shout out to, so Brian started a year after, a year before me when I, when I got started. And so that's how, obviously how we became really good friends. Right. But I do want to give a quick shout out to our boy, Will. He's on episode <laughs> one and he told his story, uh, episode one of this series that we did. Will's the one that got both of us in. Correct. He's yeah. the one that got us both in, and and I remember you also had a heart to heart with him during that time where you thought about quitting. You thought yeah. about quitting, and and he he kind of helped. Yeah, yeah, no, I mean, there's there seriously isn't enough time, man, for me to give William the the credit that he deserves, mm -hmm. right? Like Will Will's been a big uh, a huge mentor in my life, you know. Um, People, fr friendship is, is, even the word now, unfortunately, is doesn't really have the value that it used to have back then. But, you know, with Will, I always think about uh, when they say about, like, you know, put your money where your mouth is. When I was going through that struggle, man, um, Will was like, you can't give up, bro. Like, you can't. Like, I know you can make this work. Like, I've seen what you can do. You just need to believe in yourself. And I was like, Will, like, Bro, I'm. I'm you're like, almost. Sometimes you're almost too analytical to a fault. It's um, <laughs> you know, everybody hears about analysis paralysis, bro, and it's it it's very real, especially with my like with analytical personality types, right? Because if it doesn't, I live strongly by philosophy of numbers don't lie, and if it's not making sense on paper, what else do I have to do, right? Like, I mean, the paper says it doesn't work. You know, or it's not going to work, but it's just goes back to kind of like the importance of faith. Right. And, and just it's it's only up to us to believe, not to figure out how Will was the one that just kept instilling that, you know. But like I said, when I was going through that struggle, Will dude came to me and he was like, bro, I will like pay your rent for like the next like three to six months. Like, just don't give up on this, wow. you know. And that was the thing for me. I was like, dude, like. First of all, I don't that. take that lightly, but I'm like, dude, what do you see in me that I don't, right? Because you're now it's like everybody can talk, but you're putting your money, you know. So, right. so yeah, I owe William 
I still to this day, man, I, and we both know how humble he is. But I still tell William that I, I feel like I owe him everything, mm -hmm. you know? Yeah. No, shout out. Shout out, Mark. But if you haven't seen episode one yet. <laughs> so um, if knowing what you know now, right, and you, you did pretty awesome. I mean, $3.6 in five years, people are like, you know, insurance agents that are watching this, like, that's good. That's really, really good. And, you know, a question I have is if there's anything you could have done differently uh, in, you know, the last five years, what would, what, would that, what, what, what might that have been? Right. Um, but the other thing too, though, man, is, uh, I, I would have been a lot more selective with my hiring. Um, my, I, I totally just blessed to have gotten the people that I did as my first two hires, because obviously if they would have sucked, I wouldn't be here. Right. Like it, it, that was the ends right there. But I feel like one of the things that I, I still feel to this day, man, that I, I could have been better, you know, and I feel like my biggest flaw is probably the, the hiring and managing portion. I'm very good with my numbers. I'm a big risk taker, you know, things like that. But it's it's like patience has never been a virtue of mine. And I, I always like to give people the you know, the, the benefit of the doubt, like, like it's, or, you know, however you say it, but my whole thing is like, I tend to always see the good in people. And I always think that they're going to come through for me, right? Because I'm showing you that you're not just an employee to me. And unfortunately, like a lot of people have taken advantage of that, you know? Um, and for me, it's like, I feel like if I would have been quicker to recognize that I could have replaced them, replaced their seat with someone who could have helped me continue building quicker. And I never would have gone through like a lot of the struggles that I did, right? Because at one point I had two agencies and we were killing it. And then I feel like the improper staffing and the lack of action from me, as well as like the lack of coaching and everything else, um, is what basically led to me saying, you know what, let's just go ahead and merge, right? Mm -hmm. like, let's merge my agencies. Mm -hmm. Because um, it, it, it was just that. that. If I could do that, if I could redo anything again, it would, it would be that. I would have been quicker. Um, and not giving people as long of a lifeline as I have. Mm, okay. That's good advice there. I know that plenty <laughs> of, uh, I, I, I've learned from some other people that you can typically know within 60 days, whether or not someone's going to be a good fit. You're the only voice in my head that says, well, I had a girl that sold 12 policies in the first, you know, 100 and, you know, 20 days. And the, the, then, thing, <laughs> the difference is this, bro. And again, I, I'm telling you, that is something, even though I'm about to tell you this, it's still something that I wish I could, I, I, I would do differently. But the thing is that I know I'm not a patient person. So when I run across a situation where someone isn't producing the way or isn't fulfilling my expectations, I always start second guessing myself as to, are they really not? Or am I just being impatient? And I feel like it's one of those things that kind of cuts them the lifeline. But the, the thing is that in reality, you, like I was telling you earlier, you could usually tell, I think what happens is that we also partly get comfortable, Yeah. you know, because we're like, you know what? I get it, but if I replace them, it's going to take so much time again to train a new body. And right now, I just really value my time. Yeah. You know, but, but it's, it's a wrong way of thinking because the, the, the bill always comes due. You're either going to pay it now or you're going to pay it, yeah. you know, down the road, which is kind of like what's going on right now. Yeah. You know, thankfully, we got it figured out and everything's working great, but... It, the bill always comes due. So it's like, if you know it's not working out, make a decision right there and then, right? Like, do I keep them? Do I let them go? If I keep them, am I okay knowing that, okay, maybe I'm going to save the time right now, but I know this is going to become a problem sooner or later. So, yeah, you know. I think, yeah, I think when you create space, man, that, that space will be filled with the right intention and work behind it. I lost my longest tenure. No, I, I let go of my longest tenured guy and I lost my highest producing guy within a week and i thought like oh cow like damn like this is not good and um and somehow i mean obviously we kept going moving forward and we're about to break a record this month and last month we did just fine without those pieces and it's like the other team just picks it up you know the rest of your team the ones that want to be there the ones that um, they just, that space, like it works itself out. So if it's you create really cool. the right culture, which is what I think you have done is the fact that 
your people realize that we're a team. It's not about me. It's about the team, right? So I think that the reason you're feeling that, that your team is just coming together is because they're like, whoa, we're one man down, mm-hmm. right? So it's like, we, we can't let each other down. I'm not, I'm not letting, I wouldn't just let myself down. I'd let Nick down. I'd let my teammates down. And like, everybody just has that, like, let's just, you know, we got to make up the gap. Mm-hmm. You know, and, and that's that's what happens when you create the right culture. Yeah. So. All right. So switching gears here. 18 months ago, right? 18 months ago, you have this calling, right? <laughs> and I, I just remember it all so clearly because you're, 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 you know, we're all in a group chat and you're just like, I'm going to do this. I'm going to get into real estate. I'm going to get into real estate. So 18 months ago, you get this calling to begin real estate investing where do you think that came from? How did that come about? And then how did you kind of, what were the baby steps and, and things like that? But I'll let you kind of talk on that. It's, um, I don't know, man, it, it really is a long story. But so what happens is like everybody knows, right? Like uh, I, I think everybody's always heard that like the, the real millionaires, not real millionaires, but the majority of millionaires in our country became millionaires through real estate. So I think one way or another, like I've always had it in the back of my mind that I have to get into it, right? Especially like when I left corporate America to open the agencies, the money I used to open the agencies, I liquidated everything I had as far as like my pension, my 401k, everything. That's the money I used. And I, and so like my whole thing was like, what do I want to do to really kind of take control of my future? Like what will be my retirement account, right? And so like obviously here you, you, you set up different products and, you know, annuities and things like that with our financial sector. But the whole thing is that I'm like, no, I want something that I feel I can control. Mm-hmm. Right. And so like with real estate, it's always been so intriguing because there's so many exit strategies. Right. Like we, we all always think like, I mean, I don't know, maybe it's just a Hispanic thing. But for us, like my, my parents always used to say, you get some houses, you rent them out. You know, and so I was like, holy crap, I don't want to do that because then I'm going to be dealing with tenants, you know, and it's like issues and stuff. But the whole thing is that no matter what, it's like now you realize, well, there's there's a lot of different ways to to do things in real estate where the only way to make money isn't just by like buy and hold. Right. Um, so I, I was like, I have to start looking into this now because I'm not always going to have the time or the energy, you know. For me, a big focus, like, and you and I have spoken about this, is like, I've always had a, I've always felt like this duty to take care of my parents, right? And unfortunately, like, you're, we're so, I guess, in the moment every day with our own lives that we fail to re- recognize that time is passing by and they're getting older, right? And so what happens now is like, now I'm in the position where like parents are having health issues, things like that. And I feel like my timeline's been pushed up on me. And so that's why I was like, no, like we, we need to make this shit happen like now, mm-hmm. right? Because I may have time and I have all the confidence in the world that as long as my kids have me, they'll be fine. But their timeline isn't as long as like mine. So I got to like speed this up for them mm-hmm. yeah. so that I can give them what, what, you know, what I've always dreamt of giving them. So that's like, that was like the big motivator for me that, Real estate was always like, for me, it's like, a, it's, it, it's going to eventually become a step into what I need to do to become a millionaire. Why not just do it now? You know, mm-hmm. let I don't, why give myself time to get distracted with other things? Let's go into it. And, you know, I think like, like anything action is, is, is the biggest like powerhouse behind anything. Right. Analysis paralysis. I had been looking into real estate for a while, but i never took action. Yeah, And now it's like there, there was a little bit of a health scare uh, on my parents' side where for me it was like, if I'm going to do it, like, let's, let's go now. Mm-hmm. You know, I'll figure it out. Yeah. yeah, and I'll figure it out along the way. So this is kind of what I wanted the – this is a, one of the biggest questions I wanted to address on, on this episode, given your experience in both industries, right? You got, you got experience in – insurance right you own, you've opened up a few insurance agencies you scaled them and arguably you could have achieved your destination no matter what you could have done it with insurance but you made this choice and it's you're you're juggling both right now you made this choice 18 months ago to say i'm going to start going into, into house flipping like i need to learn real estate more i'm about, I'm about to trial and error my way to the real estate world and you start learning that 
my question is I wanted to answer the question, address the question, insurance versus real estate. It's a debate, right? And, and if you look on YouTube, you'll see insurance agents, right? Life insurance agents, they'll be like, insurance all day. And then real estate agents, I don't even think they're making that debate. They just know, right? Like they're not even, they don't have to plead their case, right? Yeah. I, that's what I, I, my opinion is. <laughs> um, and so you having experience in both, I thought, I knew you'd be the perfect person to kind of just talk about this. And there's might not be a right or wrong, but in your experience, which industry is better and why? So I'm going to tell you this, and obviously it's going to sound a little bit biased, right? Because the comp the agency that I have, obviously I'm a captured agent, right? So the way the experience that I have may not be every agent's experience. You right. know, I don't know if other companies, other insurance companies do things different than my own. Um, so I'll just throw that little disclaimer out there. Captive agent. Right. Of, from a captive agent's perspective would be that my biggest thing, man, is I'm not knocking insurance. Insurance is a product that, that we will always need. Residual income is great, you know, um, but the thing is that I've always felt like there's such little control, right? My, my, my philosophy, and I've told you this a lot of times, is as an insurance agent or a captured agent, I, I don't really think I would see a difference in independent, but I mean, I've never done that side. I still feel like we're glorified branch managers. Mm -hmm. My reason for saying that is the fact that your check is always going to be dependent on the company's choices, right? Which we will never be able to control, mm -hmm. right? Like at the end of the day, right now our commission structure is what it is. We game plan for it and we execute. But even like that, we still are playing like Russian roulette with when our pay stubs come out to say, oh, how am I, what am I looking like, right? Like I know what I sold, but I don't know what my renewals are going to look like, or I don't know if like they're going to, on this given month or whatever, they're going to have a promotion, so for me, it was a sense of control. Like it, it was just simply like, you know what? This is great, but at the end of the day, someone who has never been in my position, who has had to risk it all, still has the power to come down on me and just sever ties. Goodbye. And say, yeah. hey, you did great, but you know, we're, we're going in a different direction. You know? And so for me, it's like, I will, I'm, I'm like, I just, I refuse to put myself in that position. I'm, right. I'm, I'm, I'm not going to do that. So I figure why wait till it happens? You know, real estate for me, man, is definitely like the way to go just simply because of that thing, control. When I get into a deal, I know without a doubt what I'm going to make. When I, if, if, if something happens and while I'm holding a property, um, you know, the market shifts or whatever, Guess what? Like we don't we don't get into deals that we don't have multiple exit strategies on. We never buy a property that only has one one exit strategy because we know that, you know, certain things are out of your control as well, but there's things that I can do. There's something tangible, right? I guess the other thing also, man, is I've always believed in like karma, right? I always try to do right by by everyone, um, and especially anyone who does business with me. And the bad thing is that sometimes I feel like even sometimes we're limited on that, even on the insurance side, right? Like I've had customers that have had things happen to them that, you know, it's a bad rap and you wish you could do more about. Yep. And so you'll call, you'll fight for them tooth and nail and everything. But Hey, corporate policy is what it is. And this is it. And you're just kind of like, bro, but you guys don't even know the story because we're the face. You're not. Right. Right. And that's kind of the, 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 the difference where in real estate, it's all in my control. Mm -hmm. It is in my control. Hey, I'm, uh, I'm offering you 180,000 to buy your house. You know, a, hey, that might not work, Brian, you know, I'm, I'm looking uh, or that works, but I still have a huge moving expense or whatever. And so I was looking to get a little bit, why don't we work something out then? You know, like I'll buy the house and I can't offer you more on the contract, but I'll pay your moving fees. You know, there's so many different ways to structure a deal that it's like, I, I feel like real estate is more problem solving than insurance is uh, trying to be proactive. Let's get you insured in case this happens. In real estate, at least the deals that I've done, most of them have been, hey, something has happened. How can you help me? Mm -hmm. So now it's even more so the problem solver. 
you know, and it just, for that reason, I think I just feel a lot more fulfilled. I, I, I feel, I feel like I'm actually doing something that, that they're pleased with. Cause otherwise if they weren't pleased, why would they be selling me their house? Right. Um, and the other part is just, um, the control. Yeah. I, I, I know what's going to happen. You know, I don't know what's going to happen with the market, but I know what's going to happen with this house. Right. We're going to fix it. And if, and if the market's still hot, I'm going to sell it. And if it's not, then I'm going to rent it. And if, and if I don't want a long-term rental, cause I think that the dip is temporary, I'm going to Airbnb it until the market gets hot so, and then sell it. So you're, you're, you kind of have a strategy that is kind of bulletproof d- depending on what happens to the market. So you're prepared for that because technically you haven't experienced uh, what happened in 06, 07, 08, but exactly. you're kinda, we're kind of scarred from it, right? Yeah. Because <laughs> we yeah. saw what happened to our parents. Yeah. So your, your guard is up no matter what. Yeah. And we have, we have options, Airbnb. And I think that's, that. and, and I think that's why there, it's the importance of, you know, having multiple exit strategies. It's, it's dumb to get into a deal on the real estate side with just one exit strategy. Because if somebody takes that away, oof, you know, like you're, 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 you're in for a loss. But the thing is that like with real estate, going back to like your mention of like the market crash, you know, the market crash, man, and prices dropped and everything. But typically, like from like what I've been learning is the fact that if you pick any point in time and really like pick a property value, 10 years down the road, that property is almost worth double or has at least gone up like 30 percent. Mm-hmm. You know, it's because it, it just varies, but you never lose. But then the other side of that is even though the market dropped, rents never went down. Because guess what? All those people that lost their house still need to live somewhere. Mm-hmm. And they couldn't buy again because now their credit was shot. So, so it's like that's why I'm saying like as long as you get a good enough deal, like there's so much that can be done. All right, bro. So you've been a, an insurance agent for uh, going on six, six years now? Going on seven. Going on seven years now. You've built a pretty good book. And now you're, you know, you flipped 12 homes in 18 months. You know, do you see yourself exiting the insurance industry to do this full time? It's so funny, man, because, um, so this kind of cycles in perfectly because it goes back to the importance of having the like-minded individuals, right? Getting yourself, getting yourself in that group. So a big thing of being in like Ryan's program is like uh, Ryan has a lot of businesses, as you know. And so what I love about having that connection with him is that I could talk about everything, you know, not just real estate. And so I have been like teetering, like teetering, tottering for a while about what do I do with the agency, right? Because I feel that a big reason why I had the success with the agency was because I had burned the boat with corporate America, right? Wow. Like I, I, I didn't get fired or anything, but it's just, it's a pride thing. Like I, I, I'm not, I didn't just come in and say, yeah, I'm going to quit, go do an insurance agency and then I'm going to come back. Like, you know what I mean? Like it was, it's like I, I burned it. And then I already had to have that hard discussion with my wife and everything. I was like, I, I can't walk back from this. I have to make this happen. With real estate, thankfully, you know, I've been having some success but not to my standards. Like I want, I want it to grow faster. And for that reason, like I thought multiple times, like I, I should sell the agency. I should burn sell the, the agency, burn the boat, no looking back. And now it's like hundred percent real estate, right? Because I may have some reserves or whatever, but I got rent to pay. I got people to take care of. Like we, we got to do this. And having the insurance agency gives me that kind of comfort where it's like, well, if I don't get a deal this month, like it's cool. Cause like, thankfully, you know, I, I have my rents being paid from somewhere else, but, um, talking with coaches and mentors, man, like everybody tells me not to do it. It's so, and not, not the reason they tell me not to do it is because they're like, do you want to be a real estate investor or do you want to be an investor in general? Mm. Um, the philosophy behind that being when you're a, when you're a businessman, it's like the whole point is to learn how to run a business. And so one of the constant feedback that I get from Ryan is, so yes, you could do well when, when you put your, like when you really focus on something, right. 
but running a business is learning, like starting businesses is learning how to build them and then finding someone to run them for you so that you can go on to the next thing. Mm -hmm. When you just have that spirit of an entrepreneur, I don't think that you'll ever really run into something where you're like, this is enough. I'm good. I think like we just have that mindset that's always like, what's next? What's next? What's next? Right. But the whole thing is that you're not going to get a business, profit, sell it, next thing. Profit, sell it. Like then how are you like, you know, it's like it's all like they say the secret is always having multiple streams of income. Well, how do you keep those streams? Mm -hmm. You got to find a way to replicate yourself and build other people up to take your place. Right. So that's kind of like where I have constantly been like, I'm going to sell it and just go hardcore into this. Um, Ryan's constantly like, don't do that. Like learn, put, find the right people to put in place so that your business will, that agency will always just be another stream of income for you, Mm -hmm. you know, because it's like, and you get to take care of so many X amount of households. Like you're helping more, exactly more people. Exactly. Yeah. 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 You know, and that, that's, that's the thing, man. Like it, it makes, it makes perfect sense. You know, I think for me, it's like, I'm used to making a certain level of income from the agency. And if I don't make that money, then it's like, oh, this is a failure, right? Like it's, it's going downhill again. So <laughs> let's burn this so, boat. <laughs> so I need to get back in here and like build this back up. And so, and I just had this conversation with them this week where it's like, well, don't look at it that way, right? Learn how to replace yourself so that you don't really need to be there. It runs by itself. You may not still make the same amount of income up here. Maybe it it comes down here. But guess what? If you're not there at all, that's not that's not work income. Mm -hmm. That's called passive income. So now stop looking at your agency as like your main source of income. Guess what? That's my passive income because my active income now is from real estate. He's like, and then you're gonna get to a point where you're gonna build this up and put systems and processes in place where now all of a sudden this is gonna run itself. And then also it's going to be passive to you. The business itself is not passive. We know insurance isn't passive, right? But the whole thing is like, it will be to you because you have, you, you've built the machine and now you have people running the machine. Right. You know, so long run, man, I think like my mentality has changed on that. I think that, okay. um, the, the agency will stay, um, just making sure that as long as I can keep the right people to keep running it for me at all times, you know? Right. And you've got a good, solid foundation, man. My team so. is amazing, man. Um, you know, it's, I, I've, I've been blessed on multiple levels, bro. Like, uh, my, my team is amazing. I have a, a, a group of, of, I mean, killers, bro, that now, you know, uh, ever since I merged my agencies, we're down to a team of three plus myself. Mm-hmm. And we're writing now more than we were writing when I had the two separate agencies combined. You know, so it's going back to like what we've talked about already, that the importance of having the right people in the right seat. Yeah. You know, I think what's really cool about, you know, God, because we learned so much from banking and then we took that and it prepared us for our agency ownership. I wasn't even a manager at the bank. You were. I kind of fumbled and literally just bugged you guys every single day. (laughs) I just bugged you guys. But you took banking to insurance and everything you've learned in insurance now from from the staffing to the structure to the you know having your um you're not a code of ethics but having your um uh your values your your core, you values. Know, core values to the just the, the having the right seats to you know focusing on what you're good at and delegating you can take all of that and literally build out and i think you're already in the process of a lot of automation and a lot of structure within your real estate business so that way that one you know keeps going and so it's just really cool that every level every walk of life is adding value to that next one and um i think you'll be where you want to be in no time bro especially you know you have you told me what your financial number is and and i know you're (laughs) going to get there um i wanted to ask you this question what makes you feel inspired or like your best self It's uh, it's a hard question to answer, bro, uh, because it's a combination, uh, and I think a lot of it comes with maturity. Before, I would have told you that it's um, that it's winning, right? Like we all love winning. You're always chasing that that same adrenaline rush. Now, for the point of where I am in my life right now, the thing that makes me feel like just like my best self and just successful is helping people, right? Like just hel- helping my parents have always been a priority to me. Like just that, that's just there. 
even more so, and it sounds a little bit off course, but even more so at times, like they, they are my why, right? Um, but the thing is like now, especially after this whole pandemic and seeing people's situations and things like that, being able to help people, whether it's financially, whether it's with options, whether whatever it is, like that's, that, that gives me a satisfaction that just, you know, I, I, I can't replicate any other way. You know, right now we're, we're doing some other things. Um, you know, I actually noticed what you were doing too, you know, uh, kind of like you did the year before the pandemic with helping out the community and everything like Thanksgiving drives and things like that. Um, you know, we actually just donated, um, pumpkins to like elementary schools out here, oh, nice. you know, so that they can do some things. And it's like, not that I had never done it before, man, but it's just like, you're always kind of, we always do like toy driving, things like that. But now we're just trying to take a lot, a lot more of an active presence, mm -hmm. you know, um, just there, there's been some things that we've just been doing where I, I've been doing a lot more to contribute to the community and, uh, the satisfaction that gives, I, I, I know that that is now in the game plan moving forward yeah. you know like now it's even become a personal goal to besides businesses at some point i want to start a foundation yeah you know what i mean like i that is a i've always said that like if god blessed me with a, with enough or whatever like I, I always wanted to donate here donate there i think you and i talked about it at one point like i've even envisioned myself like writing like a million dollar check right to like uh saint jude's or something like that but no, like I want to take it further. Like it's, mm -hmm. it's just uh, now on the vision board is definitely a, a foundation. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I, and I, I feel like when, when I was, when we were in our, our earning stage where not even in our earning stage, when we were in our stage where we had nothing, um, I remember hearing all so many successful people saying like, you know, my real passion or purpose is helping people. And I'm going to be honest, like when I didn't have nothing, I'm like, you know, like screw people. Like, like, like I need to help my mom. Like I need to, like, like I got things I need to do. And so it was so hard to think that way when you don't have anything. But once you start getting blessed, you know, you just want to give it away, man. It's you, like, how do I, you went I feel different. guilty taking all of this, you know, like I need to give it away. Right. You, so. you went in a different direction. I thought, I thought you were going to say my thoughts whenever I heard that were like, it's a publicity stunt, bro. Like. Of course, you're, of course you're saying that because you want people to be like, you see, he does have a heart. It's not just about money. But it, it's, 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 I think what happens, bro, is like, it doesn't matter what business. It's kind of like we're saying, right? We're always thinking like, what's next? And I think what happens is that when you reach a certain level of success, not saying that we're there, you know, I don't consider myself to be there. I definitely don't need everything I have right now. So I'm, I consider myself, you know, abundant, but not to the point where I want to be. Mm -hmm. But the thing is that what happens is that you, I, I'm pretty sure you, what they have realized by now is I don't need all this, man. And getting more of the same isn't going to change mm. anything for me, right? It's kind of like what people always talk about where they're like, when I get to a certain level of success or whatever, like, I, then I'm going to be happy. These people have been there and done that. And they're just like, bro, like, I just realized, like, I'm happy now, you know, like it's so, so it's like the only other thing I could do is try to bring other people up on this happy mountain with me. Mm. You yeah. know, because it's like the the oldest thing in the book, right? It's lonely at the top. So it's like, well, why don't we bring other people up here? Mm -hmm. You know, make yeah. this a party. And I and I think and I think that's what it is, man. Like it's just the satisfaction of of being able to be somebody's um, you know, so this just happened in the last month, but like I was called somebody's like godsend. You know, like, dude, like how did you know that I even needed this? And I was like, I didn't, but you know, it's just it's it's just it, I don't know, like, sometimes you just feel a calling to do something, and then when they tell you, like, dude, you were a godsend, to me, it just, it, it really resonated, because it was just like, okay, well, I, this feeling, like, I don't know everything that they're going through, but I I could tell through her eyes that it was, like, it, it, it was night and day for her, like, the difference, you know, so... I, I that's I really want to experience that, man, like, mm -hmm. or continue experiencing it. Right, absolutely. Yeah. All right, man. So we're we're approaching the end. I got uh, the last question here, and this is the first time I'm I'm asking a question like this because um, I didn't think about it in my first two videos. But you know, the, uh, the this series is called A One Agents, right? And A One means to be of excellence or of the highest standard. Okay. Okay. Now, a question I have for you is: Imagine that your great grandkids get a hold of this video long after you're gone okay okay 
What are three standards you would want them to know that you've kept for yourself? For my for myself, and obviously that I would want them to replicate, right? Right. I want them to take that. Mm -hmm. So, if I may, I'll throw a quick shout out here, okay? Because um, let's just speed up even a little bit. This what I'm about to say would be not just my great grandkids, but even like my nieces and nephews. Mm -hmm. I have a very close relationship with my nieces and nephews. One of them in particular, you know who you are. Uh, we just had a conversation similar to this. Three, three things or three values, man, that I would say would, oh, and, it, and it's going to sound cliche, but one of them is dream big, right? Like it kind of goes back to that whole pursuit of happiness uh, with Will Smith and everything. But for me, it's very big, man, that it's like you, you always remember to dream big and not to listen to anyone, right? Because people, people don't like, people don't like the feeling of being left behind, People, if, if, if you show any sign whatsoever of wanting to improve and leave the circle, it's not that people are trying to harm you or anything. It's just they, they don't want to be left behind. So consciously or unconsciously, they'll do things and say things to try to hold you back. And you can't, you can't listen to that. You, you, God gave you your dreams for a reason. And he gave you those dreams because those dreams are for you and no one else. Right? So one would be dream big my second one would be to to always have like keep your integrity all right money comes and goes right but for me it's like who you are as a person is what you do each and every single day you know i consider myself to be a very disciplined person in certain aspects because obviously i don't have like the health uh discipline right but it's like i'm very disciplined in certain aspects like where i if it goes against my values, it could be the biggest payday in the world. But if I know it's going to rob me of my sleep, it's not worth it. Mm -hmm. That itself is telling me that don't do it. Right. So one of one of my one of our core values in our agency is we will always do what's right by the customer. Right. Because for me, like I've always been afraid of it, when, when you have a business, everyone knows your face. But I don't know every single one of my customers' faces, mm. right? And so my philosophy to my team has always been, you guys will never put me in a position where I could be embarrassed. Like, I, one of my fears is I'll be at one of my kids' karate class or a school event or whatever, and they'd be like, hey, aren't you Brian? Like, oh, you guys screwed us. Like, you wrote us wrong. We didn't have coverage. And because of that, we went bankrupt or, you know, something like that. So it's like, you will never put me in that position. So, so it's like always remain true to yourself, have integrity, you know, st stick to who you are as a person. And I think my final thing would just be, man, like just, um, the third one, it's a little bit tough because I already touched on discipline. I guess it would just be always take action. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, people, people, I feel like people have a, a little bit of a messed up outlook on life at times where they're like, I don't want to take this risk because if I lose this or whatever, like I lost this money and then, you know, then what's going to happen or whatever. But I think like, for me, it's like, stop looking at everything. Like a, I'm going to lose money or whatever. Everything is an investment in life. People talk about investing, right? Like investing is the sexy thing to do right now, right? Crypto, real estate, whatever. Everything you do is an investment because everything is going to teach you something. It's going to teach you that you should keep doing it or that you shouldn't anymore. Or, you know, so, so for me, it's like, just always take action. If you get an idea in your head, go for it, mm -hmm. you know? And again, be very selective of who you listen to because people, again, if, if, if they think everybody always sees the upside potential, like for example, this YouTube, right? But people are like, you shouldn't do that because people are going to laugh at you or maybe it's going to look silly or whatever. I mean, you know, who cares? The whole thing is, it's what you want to do. You got that idea in your head for a reason, mm -hmm. run with it. If it feels comfortable, you're going to keep doing it. If you're not, you learned why it wasn't comfortable. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But I think that, that would be the, big, the biggest three things for me, man. Because I, I, have, I have a feeling like if, if my great grandkids saw this, just taking those three things would already put them above most people. Because people don't like, people's dreams are crushed. People collect information on certain things forever and never take action. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? It, it's like, so it, it keeps, it keeps them in the rat race forever.
But I think that if, if, if you allow yourself to dream and then take the action to pursue those dreams, you're going to create something. Yeah. And I think that if you take the second one I said as far as like your integrity and your values, people will always want to do business with you. Yeah. I think those three things will, will create an unstoppable combination. There was this quote that I heard a long time ago, and I, I remember... I remember uh, I was at UNLV and then I just took this like selfie and then UNLV is like right behind me. I'm in and out, right? And this quote, I remember posting it and it was just, action eradicates fear. And that, that your last one made me think about that. Because when, yeah, we naturally, I think the more we, we analyze something, we just, oh crap, you, know, you just talk yourself out of it or you just start fearing. But uh, when you just take action, you start realizing like, holy cow, like, it's working, you know, like, and then it just builds up that slow confidence, and so it's really cool. You know, man, like, uh, I don't know, but um, the first person, I don't know if he came up with it, but the first person I ever heard say it was Will Smith, right? And he says, um, the, the best of your life is on the other side of fear, right? Like, no matter what it is, like, you, you realize until you attack it and you're in it, like, once you come through, you always realize, like, holy crap, it wasn't that bad. Mm -hmm. you know yeah and and that's kind of like the thing man that it's if i if if i think about like when we first opened up the agency it was fear 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 of failing fear of my expenses overcoming you know and everything that that really gave me that slow start you know but once i knew that i like my wife was behind me and like she wouldn't think i'm a loser if like i landed in bankruptcy or whatever it just, I was like, all right, screw it. And so it's, it's scary when you're going through it, but you already put the machine in motion. You have to follow through now. Mm -hmm. And then when it just started coming through, man, you're just like, holy crap. Like it really wasn't that bad. Yeah. Then you, you open the second agency and you're hiring like, like it's nothing, right? Like, yeah, I think they'll fit. And if they don't, like, I'll get rid of them, but right. come on in, yep, come on yep. in, you know, come on in. And <laughs> it, it, but, but it's, you, you overcame that fear. Yeah. I think it's also cool to just admit that we don't know what's going on like we're winging it you know like and and you can i know i can say this like i'm you know five years into my business and i'm like i don't know everything but i'm down to figure it out you know <laughs> it's so funny that you say that bro because while i was waiting outside on my truck i was about to put a, a thing on instagram right and people always uh, it goes back to what you just said right so it's like i don't think anybody really knows what's going on bro you know, I, 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 I'm willing to take the critique if anybody truly feels that way. But I honestly don't think anyone in life truly has their life figured out. Because none of us know what's going to happen tomorrow. We don't even know if we're going to wake up tomorrow. I think the difference between the people that appear to have their life in order and the people who don't is that the people that appear to have their life all together are the people constantly taking action. Right? Yeah. Because yeah. no matter what comes their way, they're going to adapt but they're still doing something. That's a good point. And the people who, who feel like they don't have anything together, it's because they're just staying at home and just being, just reacting to everything that's happening. Yeah. Instead of being lot, proactive about there's it. There's a lot to react to. Yeah. Yeah. You know, so I think that's the biggest difference, man. I think action is just, it's gotta be a key word because I think once, if everybody just took action on everything that they thought, I think they'd realize that things really aren't as scary on the other side. Yeah. You know absolutely. what I mean? And if you do, then, I mean, you go through it and you persevere, bro. Like, you're either going to succeed or you're going to learn something. Yeah. You never really fail, right? It's like you, you, you succeed or you learn. Yeah. Absolutely, man. So. Well, cool. I like those three. Um, thank you for being the first person to answer that question. <laughs> um, so we've uh, we've arrived to the end, Brian. Just want to acknowledge you for who you are, man. You've you Thank inspire you, me, man. You know we talk a lot of crap about each other, but a anytime I can get some advice from you, like it, because you offer this um, almost like devil's advocate type advice <laughs> that I don't hear from all of my friends, and so I always appreciate you, man. I hope that you spoke to somebody. Um, today and that you've helped multiple people. How can uh, anybody find you? You're you're we're more low key on the social media, right? But if people wanted to find you, uh, how can they find you? Uh, I mean, on Facebook, just under my name, Brian Vasquez. Um, Brian with a Y, Vasquez with two Z's. Um, and uh, on Instagram, I'm under uh, Brian Flips Vegas. Yeah, but yeah, if anybody has questions, anything, man, I'm again, I'm always looking to help people. So. You know, even if it's curiosity about the insurance side or the real estate side, 
you know, especially any locals, I'm always looking to team up. So, yep. You no. Know. So, Brian, thank you so much for being on episode three of A1 Agents. If you guys got some value, do me a huge favor. Destroy the like button, subscribe, and uh, follow me and him on all our social media platforms. Thank you guys for tuning in. Peace. Thank you.